This I Transfuse podcast is based on fact sheets you can find at transfusion.com.au, the Australian Red Cross Blood Service website for health professionals. What is a travel deferral? Different countries and regions around the world have identified risks for various diseases. These diseases may be passed on by a blood transfusion to a recipient. To avoid this, potential donors may be deferred or may only be able to donate a particular blood component for a period of time. Why does the blood service have travel deferrals? Travel deferrals are important to help prevent the transmission of diseases that are common in the area the donor has travelled to. Deferrals can be permanent, temporary, or affect which product you are able to donate. So if I'm deferred, how long will it be before I can donate again? The deferral period is dependent on a few factors. Firstly, there is the incubation period which is how long the disease takes to cause illness. Then there is a window period, which is the time between the donor being exposed and a test becoming positive. This is why deferral periods will vary for different diseases. What are the most common reasons for travel deferrals? These include variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, otherwise known as VCJD, or commonly mad cow disease. Other common deferrals are due to malaria, dengue, chikungunya, West Nile virus, HIV, and Ebola or Marburg. Can you tell me more about VCJD? VCJD is a degenerative brain disorder. It is thought to have been transmitted to people from infected beef products in the United Kingdom between the years 1986 and 2000. Because there is not a test for VCJD, People who spent a cumulative period of six months or more in the UK during the time the risk occurred are permanently deferred from donating. This is based on World Health Organization recommendations. The malaria deferral is a bit different than the others. Can you tell me more about this? Malaria is caused by a parasite spread by mosquitoes and if left untreated, it can quickly become life-threatening because it disrupts the blood supply to vital organs. Malaria kills more than one million people every year. Donors are restricted to only donate plasma for three years and in certain cases indefinitely if they have lived in or visited a country where malaria is active. Deferral can be shortened to four months based on a blood test at the four month mark. What is dengue fever? Dengue fever is an acute tropical illness that is also transmitted by mosquitoes. For four weeks after having left an infected area, donors may only donate plasma. What is chikungunya? Chikungunya is a viral disease that's spread by mosquitoes, which causes fever and severe joint pain. The word chikungunya comes from an African language and means to become contorted. This describes the way sufferers walk with a stooped appearance because of the joint pain. For four weeks after leaving an infected area, Donors are restricted to only donating plasma. What is West Nile virus? West Nile virus is spread from infected birds to humans by mosquitoes. It can cause serious inflammation of the brain and even result in death. For eight weeks after leaving the risk area, donors are restricted to only donate plasma. Can you tell me more about HIV? HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. It is a virus that weakens the immune system in humans. Before each donation, every donor is asked about their sexual contact with residents from or whilst travelling in countries with a high risk of HIV. This is a confidential interview with trained members of staff. If necessary, the donor is then deferred for a period of 12 months. You mentioned Ebola and Marburg earlier. Can you tell me more about these? These are both caused by viruses leading to fever and bleeding problems. They may also have a high risk of death. Donors are deferred from donating for a period of six weeks after leaving a high risk area. The fact sheets and podcasts are designed to provide basic information to people without training in health or science. They are not intended to be medical or professional advice. The disclaimer on transfusion.com.au applies to this podcast. For more information or to view the fact sheets, log on to transfusion.com.au. To become a blood donor, log on to donateblood.com.au.